Welcome to Mum Abroad's interview of the week. Today, my special guest is Jackie Brown. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Jackie swapped city living in the UK for the French rural life about 16 years ago. She lives with her husband and her 19-year-old son. She writes a blog where she talks about the highs and lows of village life. And she's also talked about bilingualism, the education system in France, bringing up children in general in France. And she shares her passion of reading books that are set in France. Jackie, in your opinion, what makes for an interesting blog? I have to say it has to be not too long and not too rambling. I try to aim for 500 words maximum. There are times when it sort of goes a bit over, but hey ho. Um, and I think it's important that you allow your reader to connect with you personally. So you, you have to share, you know, the good times and the bad times. Um, a catchy title with a photo that sort of matches that. And then other photos just to sort of um, break up the text. I think all makes it, it, it look less daunting when somebody first clicks on the page. We have a blog on our website on Mum Broad, and I find that the most interesting ones are the people that talk about their personal story. Mm. When other, other readers are really interested in, in how other people live or the experiences that they've had. And I think that we get the, the most uh, readers when we write something that's, that's personal. Um, I want to talk to you today about your lockdown experience. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to write daily during lockdown? To start with, France was told we would have a 15-day lockdown period and two weeks really didn't seem too onerous to sort of put pen to paper on a daily basis. Um, and my husband and I really felt it was an important sort of time to be documented. Um, it's an extraordinary event. Um, yeah, unusually for us, the three of us were back together in the house. My husband works abroad, uh, my son's away at uni. Um, so, you know, life was, life was going to be very, very different from the outset. Um, and at the time France went into lockdown, friends and family in the UK um, weren't. So it yeah. was sort of a way of sharing, sharing an unusual experience. You know, how does your, how's your average family, you know, coping with such major changes? Um, but the longer it went on, I think we ended up with 55 days in total in France. Um, but I found the more I wrote, the more I got from doing the writing, uh, it gave me a daily focus. It mm -hmm. helped to sort of clarify my thoughts and feelings um, about the time. And it almost became a way to help me cope with, um, you know, how life, how life was sort of going. So I think I probably got a lot out of it on a personal level. Um, you know, as well as receiving a lot of feedback from others saying how much they'd enjoyed it. I was going to ask you if, it, if you found it a struggle to write every day, but I don't need to ask that because obviously you didn't, you found it quite therapeutic. I, I absolutely, you know, there have been times over the years, the blog's been running, I think since about 2006, and there have been many times, you know, when you just, your mind does go blank and you kind of like, oh, I've got no incentive to sort of write, but I actually, I actually found that this was far more motivating, um, you know, than many periods in our life over here. So I think I bucked the trend. I know a lot of author friends who, you know, just, just couldn't put pen to paper during during lockdown, um, whereas I actually found it completely the opposite. <laughs> I guess also it depends on people's personal circumstances at home because um, I've got three children. I mean, they're not toddlers, but they're still, you know, they're not adults either. And um, and I found that I had very little time to, to do anything for myself with the three of them at home all the time. Whereas you have a 19 year old son. So I guess, you know, it was a different situation for you that you did actually find time to do things for yourself. Absolutely, yes. Um, although I had to slip back into being full-time wife, full-time mum, yeah. uh, full-time cook, cleaner, <laughs> etc. cetera. Uh, you know, most of my life, January to to March this year. Um, I was cooking for one, you know, it's just me, the dog and um, a couple of birds <laughs> in the garden to keep alive. Uh, so sort of trying to come up with something different to eat every night <laughs> um, that would sort of please a 19-year-old. 
um, you know, that that was something different. But I actually, I relished that. I've sort of rediscovered a, a love of cooking where, you know, a simple one pot soup, which kind of sustained me all winter, wasn't enough for the family. But, but I sort of, I did enjoy that. And yeah, I have to say, you know, having school age children, especially when you're in another language, if we'd have had to been doing daily schooling in French, uh, for a number of different age groups, or oh, I think that would have been very, very difficult. Yeah, it, he had some stuff to do for uni, but it was it was on his back. He mm. did it. Yeah, I um, I read the the first day of your blog, um, and I really enjoyed looking at the opening paragraph because you talk about how in the past few years, there have been times when you've actually felt that you haven't wanted to venture from your village, that you'd actually quite like to live a more kind of secluded life. And then you say, be careful what you wish for because it happened. So did lockdown life live up to your expectations? I think it did. Um, I was actually incredibly happy having, you know, my nest full um, and, you know, not not having the pressures of airport runs, uni yeah. laundry drops. Um, I even managed to get out of doing the weekly shop because, um, you know, for Adrian being stuck in the village, used to travelling all over Europe for work, that, that was quite tough. Um, and um, but he's far more methodical than I am. So whereas... A slight state of panic because life was changed. You put me in a supermarket with a mask on, um, mm. and I was a bit like a headless chicken. Whereas I gave him an, a, a list of things we needed. He went in, he did it, he came home, and um, you know we were very lucky. With, you know the local supermarkets here really weren't too crowded, mm. um, and it was actually a fairly pleasant experience. And so um, he became head of purchasing overnight. <laughs> So tell me, what can you name some of the highs of lockdown experience? So you had 55 days. What would what would be the highest time in that period? Um, highest time would probably be, you know, being together as a family, working outside in the garden, getting things done that had sort of sat on a, oh, we really must do that when we get timeless. Well, we had all the time in the world. We had sort of six pairs of strong arms to, or sorry, three pairs of strong arms to, uh, to do the work and um, and we did it. Um, we're also lucky enough that we've got a house which is probably too big for us, but served us well in the fact that everybody had their own space. Um, and, you know, we we all worked together of an, of an afternoon, but we very much sort of let Ed have a lie-in in the morning and do his own thing then. So we weren't we weren't all on top of each other um, and we did we did get on really well. Um, and like I say, discovering my love of, of baking again, um, you know, things like lasagna. I mean, I love a lasagna, but, you know, you think you've got to prepare the bechamel, you've got to prepare the sauce, you've then got to bake it. It creates way more washing up than a throw it into a pasta dish. But, but we had the time and, you know, it's become a weekly favourite now. And um, I think we're all quite happy with that. <laughs> One of the things that um, I found that we couldn't get in the shops here for quite a while was flour or we couldn't get it easily. And so it seemed that everybody in Spain was was baking again, you know. So I guess you, you had similar experience in France with different ingredients, did you? Uh, yeah, flour did become a little in short supply, um, but we thankfully never ran out. And again, um, yeast and baking powder. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, we did all right with that. I think because we are sort of so rural, Mm. Um, you know, we've got a good choice of supermarkets. They're not massive, but you know, we, we they were able to restock. Um, you just maybe had to wait a, a little bit longer for it. But no, we don't think there was anything that we actually ran short on at all, thankfully. So you talked a little bit about the highs, Jackie, and I know that you did have a big low as well during the period. Perhaps you can talk about that a little bit. Uh, so yes, about day 43 of our lockdown, so sort of towards the end of April, um, our 22-year-old uh, nephew, Ben, um, who's at university in Loughborough in the UK, um, tragically took his own life. Um, and obviously, you know, that's a devastating thing for, for any family at any time. But, you know, with us being stuck in France um, and, you know, not able to to do what your your initial reaction is, right, get in the car, go back, you know, be with everyone, hug yeah. everyone, grieve together. 
impossible, absolutely mm -hmm. impossible. So it all had to be done, you know, text messages, FaceTimes, um, and it's very, very difficult when, when you're not there. Very, very difficult. Sure. Will you be able to do something in the near future? I mean, do you have some ideas about having some kind of service or ceremony or some kind of gathering? Um, I do sincerely hope so. Um, we've certainly not made any plans yet to go back, although borders are open. Um, both sets of parents are sort of, you know, in the vulnerable category. Um, and you know, my parents especially have been told that, you know, they really should spend another five weeks self-isolating. So I don't want to go back and not yeah. see them, but I, I don't want to go back um, and sort of, you know, burst their, their bubble of security. Um, so for the moment, you know, plans like that are on hold. But yes, I do hope that we can go back and, you know, spend some time together with the family at some point soon. Yeah, I hope that you can do that sooner rather than later. Thank you for sharing that experience. I'm sure that was that was difficult. Um, you received quite a lot of support for your blog, I think, in your writing during the lockdown period. Was that from friends and family or was that from strangers as well? It was from both and it, it was totally unexpected. Um, you know, messages coming in every day from readers around the world, mm -hmm. you know, people that I'll probably never get to meet. Um, you know, just just sort of saying thank you. Um, thank you for for being part of their day, their their new lockdown routine began with a morning coffee and reading my latest blog post. Um, you know, some of them, you know, were commenting to say how you know they shared my concerns or feelings about about life at the moment. Um, and others were sort of you know a friend who works in um, a care home, completely lost track of what day of the week it was. She said. <laughs> was so manic but she said it, it sort of grounded her that you know she could she could look up my latest blog it would say what day it was and how many days we've now been in lockdown um and she sort of she found that helpful just as a sort of the, the diary the diary side of things um so yeah it was um it was it was very humbling actually i just didn't realize that you know people would latch onto it and then i got messages when i did ease off as france eased out of lockdown saying how much they were missing it <laughs> I think there's obviously something there about shared experiences, isn't there? People want to read about other people that are going through the same as them. And even though they, they might be in a different country in Europe or the other side of the world, many of us were living the same thing, you know, being confined to our homes, uh, having to work and, and juggle children at home and, and so on. So it was a, it's really been an internationally shared experience, hasn't it? And it I has. That's why, the, that's why your blog is, is very popular. Um, you also mentioned to me before that you've had some new opportunities that have risen um, from your blog since the lockdown. So can you tell us about that? Absolutely, yes. Um, so uh, Lise McClendon, who is uh, an American author uh, who writes cozy mysteries in France, and I've been reviewing them on the blog for many years, um, she's put together um, a an anthology uh, of life during the pandemic. It's called mm. Stop the World, Snapshots from a Pandemic. Um, and um, it's uh, 40 writers from 10 different countries and we've all contributed to something. There are short fiction pieces, poetry, um, personal essays and illustrations. Um, and that will be available from the 4th of August. So I was absolutely delighted to be asked to contribute to something like that. That's really exciting. And I think you're thinking about publishing your own book, is that right? Well, yes. One too many people contacted me at the end of the sort of the daily diaries just to sort of say, you really need to do something with this. This is an important, you know, social snapshot to be sort of, um, you know, remembered. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, if maybe one person has said it, I'd have gone, oh, yeah, OK. Um, but it was just sort of one too many to ignore. So that's my current project is to sort of, you know, turn it from the Daily Diary um, into something, you know, a little bit more substantial, um, mm -hmm. including added material of sort of, you know, how, how life has changed for us post-lockdown. Yeah, I, I feel um, that this lockdown period is kind of not over yet. I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we have to go back into some kind of confinement. So 
we kind of don't know what the future holds for us at the moment, do we? And the other thing that I feel um, is a little bit of anxiety of going back to a completely normal life. I felt some of the things that you did that I was actually quite happy. I live in a, a small village just outside of Barcelona. Um, and I've, I'm quite happy in my home, in my village, not going too far you know, out of that um, environment. And also having a calendar that didn't have too many things in it, you know, <laughs> for three months. I didn't have to write stuff in my calendar. And then as our confinement gradually kind of eased up, I noticed that more and more things were going in my agenda, you know, had to get up at a certain time to be out of the house at a certain time, had to take the children somewhere. And I'm kind of beginning to feel like I don't want to go back to that life where we're running around all the time and, and have a timetable all the time. So I think that that's something else that it's, in, it's important to document in this period, that um, it is, it's a period for people to really kind of reassess their lives, isn't it, and think about where to go from here. Absolutely. I think, you know, the world, the world stopped mm. and change is required. And it's a little disconcerting to see sort of certain things that, you know, were fantastic during lockdown, levels of pollution, um, and I think an enhanced community spirit. Um, I don't want, I don't want the world to lose that. No. Uh, you know, when it, when whatever normal happens, mm -hmm. you know, following the lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, but like you say, it, it's still a, it's a scary world out there. Mm -hmm. um, Adrian and I were actually, incredibly lucky enough to work, take a week's holiday um, over to the south of France uh, a couple of weeks ago. Something we hadn't expected to happen this year, but an opportunity arose and you know, we just thought, go for it. Um, but you know, we didn't eat out as much as we normally would when we were on holiday. Restaurants and everything were open, but it was, it was just our personal comfort level. Um, you know, we, we only book self-catering accommodation. We took all our own bedding and towels and everything with. Wow. Um, and you know, okay, people say, "Oh, you go on a holiday, you can't eat in and you know cook your own meals like you would at home." But actually, that was far the sort of less stressful option was to sort of almost carry on as normal but in a different location. Um, and yes, I think you know, yeah, I'm quite happy that my calendar is not as full as it was. <laughs> Well, Jackie, thank you so much for joining me today. Really enjoyed hearing more about your blog and your life in rural France. If people want to get into, in contact with you, what's the best way? Uh, yes, through my email, which is frenchvillagediaries at gmail.com or you know, directly to read the blog, which is frenchvillagediaries.com. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Joan. What do you love about where you live? The community spirit. Can you recommend a family-friendly activity in Poitiers? Futuroscope, which is a technical based, technical based theme park. Your favorite part of France? The Pay Basque. What book are you reading at the moment? Uh, the Ringmaster's Daughter by Carly Shabwoski, a World War II love story. Your favourite weekend activity? Cycling the rural back roads of France. Your best local restaurant? It's got to be the village bar in our village, Entrepots, between friends. Anything that you dislike about where you live? Small village syndrome. When things go wrong, they go catastrophically wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer to be reading or writing? Writing to focus and process my thoughts, reading to escape them. Do you prefer the sea or the mountains? Mountains every time, I really dislike sound. <laughs> and what three words would you use to describe your life? Simple, content, fortunate.